total atomic annihilation, the rebuilding of this great nation of ours may fall to you. That's why we at vault -Tech have prepared these educational materials for you to better understand the seven defining attributes that make you special. Hi everyone, I'm doing the second box um, in the sequence of... I'm assuming six boxes, or possibly more if it's a success, uh, for Loot Crate's Fallout Crate. Uh, this is the second box, uh, which is titled Special, which is an acronym for the uh, various attributes in the game that you can put points into. So we'll get this uh, box opened. Right, so here's the contents of this particular box. See Nick Valentine on the inside there. Right, okay. So the first item we'll get out is the t-shirt. Okay, so it's uh, a greyish type colour. There's the image on the front. There's Luke Crate exclusive on there. On the reverse you've got the Fallout logo. Inside it just says Luke Game and Bethesda. Um, so yeah, it's a uh, an officially licensed item to have. Um, so the print on the front it says Southeast Stout uh, with Button Gwinnett's uh, portrait on there. Now that's one of the more obscure items in Fallout 4 um, and it's only Fallout 4 that you get those bottles of beer spawning in you know random places. Um, so it's unless you've actually played Fallout 4 you would have no knowledge of what that is, that, you know, for a, really, um, if somebody else saw you wearing that, they would just say you were wearing like a, a random generic um, alcohol t-shirt, alcohol based t-shirt, um, you know, just promoting a beer or something like that, uh, unless they saw the reverse, of course, with the Fallout logo on. Um, I can give them kudos for choosing something that's so obscure. Um, because most of the Fallout t-shirts you tend to see feature Vault Boy in some form on the front or like the Nuka Cola logo or dog meat sometimes so this is the first time I've ever seen um, a, a South East Stout t-shirt um, I just don't, don't like it to be honest um, I just don't like the design they could have gone with a lot of other designs from the game uh, there's a lot of, for example, the skill books that you pick up, they could have gone with, you know, one of the covers for one of those. Um, they could have put, like, a schematic down for, like, power armor or something like that on a t-shirt. Uh, they could have done any number of, um, like, concept art for landscapes in the game and uh, not necessarily putting, like, the Lone Wanderer in, but they could have put any of the other characters in, in, in the game like some of the enemies they could have put there's there's a lot of different um, choices they could have gone with for the t-shirt design but they've chosen possibly one of the most obscure things and I think in the game that's totally superfluous as well it's you, you don't need to pick them up there's not like in in Fallout games where you get like a, an achievement or a quest line associated with picking up a number of Nuka Cola bottles or Nuka Cola Quantums. Nothing at all like that with the beer in the game. They just give you a, a, a certain boost, and that's it. To be honest, um, I wouldn't have gone with that design. But kudos for picking something that hasn't been done before. I suppose. So there you go. And actually, I can't wear this anyway at this time because. It's absolutely freezing outside. <laughs> it's something like minus three, something like that. Um, we've got a cold front coming in from Eastern Europe, I think. So at this moment in time, it's not T-shirt weather at all. Hence why I've got this on. This is last uh, the last box, um, first box Fallout Crate, um, and it was a hoodie, so it's nice and you know fleecy and warm for this type of weather. So that's the uh, the T-shirt out the way. Uh, next item we've got is the, uh, the sunglasses. Now, I've actually seen the items in this crate because there's been a lot of spoilers and reveals online and also other people's unboxings. So even though I've seen the contents, it's basically it's just my opinion on these contents. So there you go. 
Right, so here's the case for the sunglasses. You've got Volt Boy on the front there. Got a nice textured finish to it, fabric -y finish. Quite rigid, you can see as well there. So it's a, a nice hard shell case for sunglasses. Um, and it's got like a little loop there as well if you wish to clip it to a bag or you know something like that, like a belt, belt loop, whatever you wish to clip it to. And it's entirely zipped and here's the sunglasses inside. And it's quite a light case. Um, it's probably one of those rare instances where I've actually preferred the case to the sunglasses. Uh, so here they are, they are very flimsy. Let's take this bit of plastic off. Oh, stuck to my hands with static. Um, it's got images of Vault Boy in various guises on the sides. And on the inside, on one of the arms, you've got Perception Plus One which is what you gain when you wear certain glasses in the game they're just um, basically, oh it's got um, UV 400 protection on so it's protection against the sun's rays there as all sunglasses should be that's the whole purpose of them apart from shielding your eyes from a bright light but um, they're just your standard cheap black plastic sunglasses that you would find in a discount store, bargain shop for about a pound or a dollar, something like that, a couple of dollars, a couple of pounds nothing too expensive, very very cheap um, that's, they do the job filter the light, filter the sun's rays nothing too special, I would have preferred it if they'd have um, you know, it's I can appreciate the design of Vault Boy on the sides and the perception's a nice little touch there, perception plus one. But uh, they're just so generic, so very plasticky. Um, I can understand, you know, with the price of the box, you know, you're not going to get something that's made of the frame's not going to be metal. Um, but saying that, they could have put a bit more effort into the actual, you know, design of these glasses because they just look like everybody's generic black plastic sunglasses and um, you know it does have a official Bethesda um, spiel on the other arm but they're not too good very plasticky very very cheap um, I will probably end up using the case for my usual sunglasses um, I've had my sunglasses since 2003 and they're actually matrix ones from the second film uh, I got those online at the time and they're officially branded ones and they're, they're, they're like metal framed and they look like Neos in the film so I tend to wear those but as you know in this country we don't get that much um, sunshine it's all in the UK it's very overcast um, we get about two weeks tops of good weather um, sometimes we'll get a mini heat wave but on the whole overcast no need really for sunglasses we're not in a in that particular climate where we would need to have sunglasses on all the time so I suppose there's that I just wish there'd been a little bit more thought with the actual shape of them they could have gone with something that was like 1950s designs you know or they could have done with like a futuristic type like almost like steampunk type that would have been interesting there would have been there uh, but obviously if you know it's cost isn't it Luke Crater I don't know, I've heard rumours, I've seen on Reddit that they're in financial difficulties so they're not going to pay too much for the production of items when they can't shift their existing stock, so there is that. Um, the next item we'll get out, uh, we will get the second part of the builder figure out of the way, that's the box for it. Um, yeah, this is the torso this time, it's all the various sides of the box. Now this is a good indication of the torso being one of the biggest parts of the figure of how it's going to turn out once it's fully assembled after we've received all six parts of this figure. And true to last, uh, the last box, I can't say last month because it's a bi-monthly box so I'm totally contradicting what I'm saying but um, yeah, the past box um, the helmet and the stand, they were very good quality, well the helmet was, the stand was just generic flimsy plastic which is what they're using for their own figures to fall out, the same 
like vault door type stand and here's the, the torso it's nicely painted it's got some good sheen to it to make it look like it's made out of metal and it's got nice copper pipes as well around the various parts of the figure it does feel quite light it, it's it's not got a great it hasn't got a great weight to it but it's essentially a part of a figure it's not the whole figure so when it's fully assembled it might be you know have a decent weight to it here's last uh, the last boxes helmet assemble that together and it just presses on there so that's uh, two parts of this six part figure and it has got some really nice detail and paintwork on it no um, smudging of the paint it looks like it's possibly hand painted I don't know um, but even if it is mass produced, well it is mass produced, but even if it is uh, entirely done by machine, it's it's a decent job. Uh, it's got some nice um, rust detail as well around there. Because we are, you know, 200 years, well we aren't, but in the game it's, it's 200 years past an apocalyptic event where there's lots of radiation and, you know, there's not going to be materials at hand to make new sets of power armour, so... Uh, there's not going to be a lot of rust and degradation on the metal of the actual armour, which is you know nicely represented here with this this part of a figure, and there's the the base as well, which is just your standard flimsy base what they're using for these figures. Um, so when it's fully assembled, that's going to be roughly half the height of the figure. So you're talking about something about down here, so six or seven inches, you know, around that. Uh, hopefully it'll be larger than the other figures that they're including in each box and it is certainly more detailed more than twice the amount of detail what they're putting on these figures that they're creating themselves for Fallout um, and incidentally mentioning those figures here's the second figure the last one was Forks from Fallout 3 this time we've got Nick Valentine from Fallout 4 now, I wasn't too impressed with the reveal of this figure. Um, from the picture, he looked basically like a storm mannequin or a shop dummy. Uh, not too much detail, very flat and bland with the uh, paint job. Um, because Nick Valentine is essentially one of the early synths in Fallout 4 who's been chucked out in the trash by the Institute. Um, Still retains, you know, there's the box inside with Fallout branding on the back inside. Um, yeah, he still retains the program he's been given. He's been given the the memories or the identity of a like an old uh, gumshoe detective, like a 1940s, 1950s, like Dashiell Hammett type detective, um, like something else of uh, the Maltese Falcon. Um, and he's one of the more interesting characters in Fallout 4 because I found. Um, the characters to be pretty bland and generic in Fallout 4 but Nick Valentine was one of the best voiced and interesting characters in that game um, so we'll just get the stand out even though it's exactly the same as all of the other stands I'm using so it's just the same generic vault door with 1 to 126 on it and very flimsy, uh, flimsy very flimsy uh, plastic there so here's the, the Nick Valentine uh, figure. Now, I'm still not too impressed with that because it looks still um, as pretty much what it did on the reveal photograph. Um, I mean, you can tell it is Nick Valentine because you can see the exposed circuitry there the side of his head uh, but um, he is stylized he's still got an oversized head um, you can recognize him by his trench coat and fedora um, or is it a trilby I'm not sure I think it's a fedora yeah it's a fedora that I think but um, he I, I'm not too impressed with the face I know his eyes just don't look like that aside from the color uh, and there's a lot more seams on the character model in the game. 
he's got a lot more seams on his body, a lot more dirt, obviously we've been thrown away and um, you know it's it is a stylized figure, I will give them that. It's intended to be, you know, something that's not wholly accurate to the game. There's his, uh, his pistol there as well, that just clips to the side. Um, just see if I can clip that in. It's like a little indent in the side of his trench coat there where you can clip that in. So it's, uh, it's not too bad, um, but his face, facially, it doesn't resemble him that much. Um, it just looks like a grey face of a nondescript character, really. Um, and, yeah, I'm still just as disappointed with it from when I saw it first on, on the reveal picture that Luke Crate themselves did. Right, finally got him on his stand there. So that's him on the stand. And I'll just uh, compare with forks from the previous box so there we go so we've got vertically challenged forks and store mannequin Nick Valentine so and it, it's strange that forks is you know ever so slightly shorter than Nick Valentine when he should be almost twice as high because he's a super mutant but you know that's uh, the range of these stylized figures that's the way they've done them. They've done them at a set, a set height, probably for production purposes, manufacturing purposes. Um, but it's okay. I don't hate the figure. I just wish it was more facially recognisable as Nick Valentine, and there was a lot more like dirt and grime to say that he's a you know a, basically like a cast off a thrown away synth. But I do, I do love the character. He's one of my favourite characters in the game. Love all his lines. Um, I had him as a companion quite a lot throughout the game. But yeah, I do. I'm a, I've got mixed feelings about it. Um, I like it some aspects, and I don't like other aspects. But I wish they would improve because they are very inconsistent. Luke Crate with their own figures, uh, they are very inconsistent with the quality and the likenesses. So that's the Nick Valentine figure there. Right, and the next item we've got is a your special set of notebooks. It's like a small format of notebooks there. There's the box again without any sheen to it from the light reflecting. There's the it's it's a nice nice thick casing for those. And inside you've got individual um, notepads. So there's the endurance one. There's perception. There's look. There's intelligence. There's strength. There's charisma. And there's uh, agility. So that's all of these seven books. Um, this one's got line pages in for endurance. You can see that. I'll just open it up. That's lined. A perception. It's done like graph paper. You've got look, which is like graph paper as well. Intelligence has got like a series of dots. Across the pages, and you've got strength, which is a series of dots as well. And there's graph paper for charisma. I don't know whether I'm repeating myself, but back to agility now. Agility and endurance. Playing series agility. There's uh, lines, and you've got just got inside each side um, inlay of the cover. It's just got fallout. This belongs to, and on the back you've got an explanation of what each attribute does um, and the perks that those basically you know the, the perks that it affects if you choose to put points into that um, as it goes they're not bad um, the covers nice and thick but for an actual item 
it is still disappointing. Um, I mean, everybody writes in notebooks, you know, at some point you will need to write things down. Um, but it's just so bland and Luke Crate's always doing journals and notebooks, that sort of things in their crates and it's to be expected, it's um, it's a filler item, um, being totally honest it is a filler item. Something with this kind of packaging that isn't so, that if it wasn't so disposable it would be nice to have as a collector, a, you know, like a collector's item, um, like a little keepsake sort of thing, but as it's so disposable, um, you could just write in all these books, got no space left, toss them away. Um, for something that says you're special on the front, like the book in the game, in the beginning of like Fallout 3, and it's even in Fallout 4 as well, like a children's book, um, and that's what basically takes you through uh, where you put your initial points in each of these, um, you know, seven attributes. What you're going to pick determines what your character is going to be like. Um, I would have loved if they'd have put like um, a replica of the Your Special book in the crate instead of just notebooks. You know, an actual reprint of the book from the game uh, with the little pictures inside, and that would have been a nice little touch. You know, it's uh, it'd be a, an actual replica of a game item. Would have been in two games now. I think Fallout Three, Fallout Four. I'm not sure about New Vegas because that was a different. It was the developers of Fallout Two did. Uh, Obsidian, who did New Vegas, so I'm not sure if they put it in that, but I know for sure uh, Fallout 3 and Fallout 4 had the, the Your Special book, and I would have loved to have had a reprint, an exact replica of the Your Special book, but instead we've got a collection of blank notebooks, and Luke Crate unfortunately do put those items in the boxes all the time. Um, and here we go, the last item is the Fallout pin. And that's the uh, the strength one. Um, so yeah, if you're into collecting pins, especially Fallout pins, you'll have a nice collection of them. You know, once you've got all six crates, I don't know whether they're going to do any beyond the initial six. They probably see how it goes. But yeah, there's the Fallout crate uh, pin this month. Just your standard pin, nicely cut out. Um, some type of metal they've used on there. Nice gold colour. That's the Fallout pin. And um, we've got the inventory. Now, I like these inventories because usually, Loot Crate, they will pull a very thin poster that's been folded up. And you can see all of the score marks where it's been folded in white. And it makes it very uh, hard for you to put it up on a wall or somewhere because it's you can see all of the lines from the fold marks. Uh, these ones, though... Um, this is the second time they've done this. They've done a nice, uh, not thick, but it's got a nice, you know, thickness to it of card of the uh, the Voltec uh, perks, and it's like a you know pictorial representation of representation of all the perks that you can put points into in the game, as well as being a, an inventory for the actual box. Um, it's just a shame that the image they've chosen for this particular box, you could, you actually got, I think you got it as a poster in the, the copy of the game, so you can actually get that printed out anyway. But it's not such a, a small format; it's still a folded poster, so you could, you know, because this, I'm assuming this is A4 sized, you could get a frame easily for this and frame it if you wish to do so. It's just not as um, eye catching as the the first print, which was like a. A 1950s style um, homage to adverts of that you know that time uh, with like the you know the the domestic 50s family uh, in their home setting. Whereas this is a very small print, you'd have to go up close to it to see all the individual uh, perks in there. So it is quite small. You'd have to you know go up to the picture on the wall to see what it's a representation of it. It's quite muddied as well. It's at a distance it just looks like a, a mishmash of blue and other little colours as well, but that's what it looks like from a distance. It's very you know, it's not it doesn't stand out. It's not really frame worthy, but you could do if you wish to, to do it that way. Um here's the reverse with all the items for this box. Gwyneth Beer t-shirt, um, Fallout 4 Nick Valentine figure, uh, Power Armor Builder figure torso, 
Um, and they've also put, uh, did you miss the first piece of the Power Armor Builder figure? You can get it for a limited time only in the loot vault, head to vault.lootcrate.com. So they're actually promoting uh, any surplus stock they've had of the first box. And they're trying to sell it on loot, uh, loot Crate Vault. Which is what they're doing with a lot of surplus stock from their, their other boxes they're trying to shift all at the moment. As well as putting old stock in new boxes, which they've been doing with loot gaming and I think they might be doing that with loot anime I'm not sure but essentially they're trying to get rid of the warehouses full of old stock that they've got over the past few years um, special notebook set sunglasses plus case and the strength perk pin so that's that for this month um, it's priced higher than your usual standard loot crate but I feel you're getting the same sort of items that you will get in a standard loot crate certainly not dx level i would class the first loot crate <coughs> fallout loot crates with the this um hoodie and the other items in it i would class that as on the level of a dx box but this particular one has been downgraded to the quality of a standard loot crate um and it's disappointing because you know that these subsequent boxes are going to have a similar level of quality to the second box. Um, I don't know, you might get towards the end of its run something that's close in quality to the initial box that they brought out, but I'm not holding my breath because I've had too many boxes from Loot Crate now and I know that the way they operate is they'll give everyone um, a taste for it with a really good box and then every month after then it will be just downgrades uh, so they're not consistent with the quality and that's probably why they are running into financial difficulty with losing subscribers because people aren't stupid they will see the quality decline uh, they will see all these repeat items as well what they're doing now and it's not going to help the company in the long run um, saying that I don't totally hate this box uh, I'm just not impressed with it the items it might hit its value, you know, it, it probably does hit its value, but I certainly wouldn't say it's uh, a lot of value in the box because you're going to see at some point these items in Loot Vault heavily discounted, so they're not going to be worth that much. Um, but you know, it's hopefully it will pick up. I can't, I haven't got my hopes up uh, because they're just so inconsistent, Loot Crate, very inconsistent with the quality of things. And it's just so generic and dull with some of the items. You know you're going to get socks at some point. You know you've, you're you going to get a mug. We've had the mug with the first box. But uh, next box is going to be themed uh, Nuka Cola. And I've seen the reveal for the, the Piper figure in that. And it just... Piper in the game is one of the more irritating characters. Um, she's quite irritating in Fallout 4. And... They've done what they like Nick Valentine, the likeness is not very good. Um she uh, dare I say it, she looks like a transgender piper, the figure. <laughs> it just it's the detail's not great. And she's got quite uh, an angular jaw in the in the, the representation on the figure, so it, it does make her look more masculine. So I'm not building my hopes up for any changes in that figure because they don't tend to change the quality or the likenesses at all it's probably been set in, in production already so I'm not hope, I haven't got high hopes for that um, I just wish as well on, a, on another note I wish that Loot Crate would do other games in the franchise other than just the Bethesda games because as we all know Bethesda only acquired the license to Fallout it was actually um, Black Isle Studios who created the whole Fallout universe and then you know we had um, the people who branched off once the company went bankrupt uh, to form Obsidian Entertainment and there's people in uh, another company called In Exile which ties in with the name Black Isle In Exile it's the some of the members of Black Isle who formed you know another company they did The Bard's Tale which is a nice uh, nice RPG uh, an Obsidian um, you know they've been subject to a lot of strict deadlines so they've had 
a lot of bugs in the games like Fallout New Vegas but you can blame Bethesda for them wanting to get it out quickly but I just wish there were other um, games that were represented in these boxes other than just the Bethesda ones Fallout 3 and Fallout 4 which is what we've seen at the moment and I know there is, you know, Vault Boy's been there since the beginning um, as have the Super Mutants um, but we're seeing a lot of the items focusing around Bethesda's games when you know we should be seeing more of you know the other not other the other games represented basically because Fallout did exist before Fallout 3 when we have Fallout 1 and 2 and Fallout Tactics but you know it's uh, I, I wish there was more choice that's what I'm getting at there you go I would give this box 3 out of 5 I'm not going to be too harsh for me it's mediocre it's not great and it's not bad but it's mediocre to me um, I just wish you know I hope it picks up um, here's the inside as well of the box in its entirety it's Nick Valentine standing there like film noir black and white smoking his cigarette so yeah that's my review of this month's uh, Fallout Crease number two and uh, let's hope it gets better in the future um, thanks a lot for watching this video, please like, comment and subscribe and I will see you in the next unboxing video. Thanks a lot for watching, goodbye. What's this? Only scrounging up duds? Time and patience may net you a suitable collection, but with luck on your side, you're bound to find some swell keepers. No, no, hold on to anything shiny. It may be of hidden value.